Not very long ago, Toyota didn't sell sports cars. But then in 2012, they introduced this 86. And it was a toe in the pool of should we get back into sports cars? But to do that, Toyota partnered with Subaru. Then in 2019, to build the Supra, Toyota also needed to partner with another car company, BMW. When the return of the Supra was first announced, they were going to make a two liter four cylinder. Then I said to Paul, if they do, doesn't that car make the 86 irrelevant? Both of these cars have two liter engines and both cars were partnerships with other car companies. So now here's Toyota with Step Brothers, very different siblings. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. I am immediately starting with price. The 86, the Hakone Edition, is $30,825. The price of the Supra is $42,900. That's a $12,000 jump. But actually, the Supra has the safety and technology package for almost $3,500, and then that nitro yellow paint is $425. So what am I getting for 16 grand more than the 86 already offers? The Supra styling was pretty controversial when it was first introduced. They took the FT1 concept and they took all the weird vents and strakes and cuts on that and pushed it down to a smaller chassis so that it would fit the wheelbase of the Boxster Cayman at just over 97 inches. As a result, the proportions had to be morphed quite a bit. And at first glance, it wasn't attractive for a lot of people. I think it's aging well. I think more of us are liking it the more we see it. Random people walk up to this car on this shoot and ask all kinds of questions. The color is a lot of it. And I also think the two liter Supras, different wheels, have set it off even more. Have you noticed a styling theme throughout the Toyota lineup at this point? Look at the back of the car. There's the taillights, and then there's a line or a crease or a panel gap that drops to the ground. It turns almost 90 degrees and it drops straight to the ground. The Camry, the Avalon, the RAV4, many others, the 86 established that styling theme. This Supra, based on the FT concept, took it further. The Formula One inspired nose, the proportions, the shorter wheelbase, and what's interesting is, this is a longer car than the 86 with a shorter wheelbase, but it's wider. Everything from the door slam all the way to everything you touch and the way the car feels put together tells you this is a new level beyond the 86. The styling is clean on the interior. This horizontal line where the air conditioner vents are, I think this is just gonna look timeless. The vents in this car just aren't big enough. When you drive on a really hot day, you'll find that the 86 generally keeps you cooler, which is even more surprising when you consider the fact that this cabin is kind of a cocoon. This is far closer to the bunker feel of something like the Chevrolet Camaro than it is the open feel of the 86. This Supra is a cave in here. Simple screen, it's a little small, but I'm fine with it. We don't need a giant screen anymore. And just simple controls, yes, they do look a lot like BMW Switch Gear, but that's okay. The shapes are interesting, but they're not overdone. It's not shouting at you. All of the BMW jeans are most visible here in the interior. This center stack is right out of the prior version of BMW. They did make unique gauges. A lot of the iDrive information screens here are exactly out of the BMW lineup. This car, amazingly enough, with the styling as it is, they've updated the headlights, they've updated the taillights, a little bit of freshening on the front end that I don't love, but I can see it. It just looks good. And of course, in this color, it's brilliant. This Hakone Edition 86 is essentially just an appearance package. It is this really cool green color, these nice gold wheels, the tan accents in the seats, and you're done. This doesn't have the upgraded dampers and brakes and suspension components. Everything feels like it's gonna last a long time, especially the way this car shifts. Love the crisp, precise shifter. And the seats, I like the seats in this car, but I don't feel like I sit down in this car. I feel like I'm just sort of 
in the car, but not wrapped around a racing machine. You've got far more visibility in here than you do in the Supra, much to my surprise. And actually, the pedal box has got a ton of room. This is a great car for big guys like us. It also has, in case you haven't noticed, a back seat that folds down. This has a ton of actual usable cargo space or just life space, and it still feels like everybody has more space than you do in the Supra. The interactions that you have as a driver are all, frankly, perfect. The ergonomics of the steering and the pedals and the gear shift, everything is exactly what it should be. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Haggerty Drivers Club, featuring a magazine subscription, automotive discounts, roadside service, and much more. I have been having a love-hate relationship with the power of the 86 ever since it came out. Now it's been bumped up to 205 horsepower, which sounds like a lot, except that every time I shift, I reach the end of the throttle travel. I'm hitting the bump stop with my foot and really just adds a whole bunch of noise to the equation. The place where the 86 falls down the most is its torque delivery and the fact we've talked about it ad nauseum. There is a torque dip from about 3,000 to nearly 5,000 RPM. Now once it gets above 5,000 RPM, it builds in a fantastic naturally aspirated way. The response to the throttle is glorious. It's so granular it feels like it's almost happening at the cellular level. You can feel the car responding to every little input that you give it in a way that a turbo motor just doesn't. So now this car remains naturally aspirated and because the Supra 2.0 is turbocharged, I don't mind that this stays where it's at. End of the throttle travel. Next gear, end of the throttle travel. I'm floored. I just have to wait. Okay, now we're going fast. Great, great, great. I just want to drive this car quickly. I want to enjoy it. I, I want better tires. I want better tires more than I want a better engine, honestly. This should have really good tires from the factory, and I think people would complain less. I really do. But no, that's not right. Everybody just wants power. Nobody thinks about handling. Everybody just wants power. We just, that number's not big enough. I'm not thrown back in my seat enough. You're missing the magic of this car. It, it's magical. It really is great. BMW offered a wonderful inline six for the first GR Supra. But now the 2.0 has been introduced. If you really want to know, it's the B48 engine, which has been used by a lot of BMWs and a lot of cars over many years. It's got a twin scroll turbo, 255 horsepower, and 295 pound-feet of torque, which is a lot. 50 more horsepower than the 86, but twice as much torque. You can feel that grunt all the time. This is the power of turbos. Here in the middle of the rev band, it doesn't even matter what gear. You've just got power. Now it has no personality of any kind because it's just turbocharged engine, feels like a light switch. You hit the pedal and it goes faster. There isn't really anything to learn here. It just has power all the way through. The 86 definitely has an engine that you have to figure out. Suddenly I'm going <clears throat> a lot faster than I think. <laughs> this car handles speed. And the chassis isn't too jittery. It's the perfect wheelbase. It's the Cayman wheelbase. I'm in sport mode. It's in manual mode here using the paddles. This is an eight speed automatic transmission and it's the same transmission in any of the Supras, any engine. At this point, we don't know if a manual transmission is coming. And yes, the shortcomings of not having a manual and that engagement are where the 86 shines and the Supra loses. It's hard to feel like this car has very much power until you do two things, over in the manual with the gear shift and sport on the settings. Then you gotta hit paddles and find the power and the loudness and the speed. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Covercraft. Use the code EVERYDAY for 10% off your order. Look at the side profile of both of these cars. 
you're sitting much farther back in the Supra, whereas this car, you're almost in the middle of the car, which brings me to weight. The 86 is 2,800 pounds, which is a lightweight sports car. It can be considered a front mid-engine car, and it feels light, but you can tell the overarching headspace was bring out a sports car, collaborate with another car company to be able to do it, keep the costs down. You can feel that throughout the car. One of the big surprises for me compared to that Supra is actually ride quality. Now, the Supra is riding on much wider, much stickier, stiffer tires. I will acknowledge that. But running over like tar snakes on a road or heaves in a pavement, the Supra kind of beats you up. This absorbs it really well and yet still does a great job of being a good enough suspension setup to handle well on the corners. The steering ratio is sharp on this car. It's 13 to 1. That's pretty impressive, but it's got a four inch longer wheelbase than the Supra. And as well as it turns in, I feel like this is not the purer sports car. Tires aside, and I know you could add the tires, you could get the special edition, but the Supra handles better. If you put really good performance Michelins on this, like or on the Supra, this sticks like crazy. And what's nuts is that this has little 215 millimeter wide tires. The 86 is also surprisingly more forgiving in transitions than that Supra. This feels gradual and analog, and the steering feel is some of the best out there, honestly, at any price point. It's just flat out fun to drive this car in all conditions. It's democratized, it's accessible for people. It's at the lower end of the sports car scale. If you say, I just want a fun sports car for beautiful roads like this, the 86 is your choice. In comparison to the two liter Supra, this is a little bit like a GT car. There is a friendly analog nature to this car, no matter what you ask it to do, that's just endearing. This is your most reliable friend at their most relaxed and happy. This is probably the most honest driver's car being made right now, and there I am including the Miata. This is a perfect daily sports car. Here's the difference in handling between the 86 and the Supra. The 86 has a lot of road feel from the steering. The Supra has a lot of car feel from the steering. I know exactly what the car's doing. I'm not feeling every lump and bump and undulation, but you feel more in the 86. This doesn't have the adaptive dampers that the upper level Supra has. It also doesn't have the E differential that the upper level Supra has. So what's interesting is this two liter Supra loses just over 200 pounds from its bigger brother. That's significant because it brings it down to just under 3,200 pounds, which is still 400 pounds heavier than the 86. That's it? Only 400 pounds? I'm fine with that. I get a lot wider car and a shorter wheelbase and a, a steering ratio that even though it's not quite as quick as the 86, the shorter wheelbase is the magic. There is incredible rotation provided by that really short wheelbase. And the limited slip differential out back is a mechanical one on this, just like it is on the 86. Let's say we had the special edition TRD86. I would still choose the Supra because of the shorter wheelbase, because of the benchmark nature of the Supra against the Cayman. This rotates far more quickly than the 86, even though the steering ratio is slower, 15 to one in this car. This is a rougher, more abrupt ride, and that translates to all of the movements. Turn in, while quick enough, does feel really abrupt. The Supra dives more under braking than I would suspect, and it struggles in fights with a rough road. I've gone over a couple bumps in this Supra where I actually bounced enough that my head hit the ceiling. That's never happened in the 86, and I was going about the same speed. I have more car feel in the Supra and more road feel in the 86. The raw feel of the 86 is fun. You feel you're connected, but now I feel like I'm connected to the car in the Supra. This is very fast, incredibly capable, but compared to the 86, it's keeping me at bay a little bit. It's not asking me for as much as a driver. It's not bothering me with what's going on. It's just giving me something impressive and going, you're welcome. The 86 is the far more engaging driver's car. The 
fact that this is the next level up of engineering and materials, solidity and road holding. I can definitively say this is the better car. It's more fun. This Supra is definitely the stepbrother with more. It's got more money, more swagger, more attitude, more to show for itself, but it just can't seem to lose that weight. That 400 pounds is a problem, and it keeps this car from feeling as agile and friendly and athletic as its less well-to-do brother. Toyota kept to itself for a while. They, they were kind of insular and they made themselves one of the most powerful car companies in the world and they offered the best car appliance for every buyer. And then they got bored, I guess. Toyota went out on the town, decided to have some affairs and one was with Subaru and the other was with BMW. And they've created two genuinely great sports cars. And to my great relief, two very different sports cars. The shortcomings of one car is the specialty of another. Now, this is not a premium product. The way you close the door, the materials that you touch, the look of it, the feel of the seats, it doesn't feel like an expensive car. If you're looking for a sports car, I still think you want the 86. It just lays everything out about its personality in the first 10 seconds of driving it. I want something more, I want something deeper. And therefore, I feel like if I were to own an 86, I'd get tired of it faster. My concern now that rumors are happening of a second generation 86 is that Toyota is going to kill the things that make this great. The honest analog sensation, the naturally aspirated engine, the things that now that I've driven both define this as different than the Supra. In the 86, Toyota has found its Miata. It does have a place separate from the Supra in the lineup, and I honestly think a more fun place. Does more money give you more fun? Yes. This is the spec to have. Even the nitro yellow, it's brilliant. It looks brilliant. This is the car you want. It is unequivocally worth $16,000 more. It's expensive, don't get me wrong but it's not too much. Toyota is in a renaissance. These cars are proof. Toyota should go out on the town more often. More affairs for Toyota. This is awesome. I didn't really expect we'd do a TV episode with one manufacturer, two different sports cars from the same lineup, but here we are. They look good together, don't they? They you can do. See, you can see some styling similarities, but yeah. you can see truly big brother, little brother. And this is what I like about it. The price, I think, justifies the differentiation. When you look at the initial specs, rear wheel drive, two liter four cylinder, these should be pretty similar. I am so yeah. pleased to say that they aren't. They're similar, and like I said before, the strengths of one are the shortcomings of another. The shortcomings That's of good. one are the strengths That's of another. That's really good, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually like that the gulf between the two cars is wide enough to differentiate the two and therefore justify Toyota to sell both. I agree that they're justified to sell both. $16,000 is a big difference between these two cars. And I, I cannot, it you've is. already heard it me, is. I cannot say that this is a $16,000 better car. It's a more luxurious car, but when it comes down to what do you like, what do you want to drive, what would I buy, I can't believe I'm still saying this, but I think that is not only holding its own, that's still the one I'd take. Really? Yes, I would take the 86 really? completely, all day long, all day long. I think the Supra is more than justified. I think it's worth every dollar for me. I would take the Supra all day, every would day. Would you really? I acknowledge the 86. Yeah. But Toyota's never gonna make the 86 better. It's been around since 2012, and they still won't make the 86 better because they said, here's the Supra. I see that, I see that. I think this is more car. I don't think it's more fun car, but what's great is they're both awesome. As good as the 86 is and as fun as it is, I think I've discovered all there is to know about this generation and it's likable. I just want something more. The 86 is the more playful car. It's the more approachable car. It's the more fun car. I love the Supra. This is the car that I'd take. If you push me, every time I'd take the Supra. I want the car that wants to pull more out of me. Ooh, 
This is a great car for your cross-country road trip. It's a great car for your back road you just discovered. You will have crazy fun in the 2-liter Supra. The 86 just communicates more.